Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. How are you? I'm well. Thanks a lot. Thank you for asking. How are you? Well, alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, beloved family. Pray that all is well with you all. This is Sheikh Fawad Wali. Can everybody hear me? Yes, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum Can everyone hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. So uh, by Allah's grace, I'm going to be opening up for beloved Sheikh Idris Ba. So let's go ahead and open up with our prayers. We're gonna open with the Stakhtala Bihi and uh, the other prayers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa salam wa barik ala Sayyidina wa Malana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sabihi wa taqabal mini liwaj hi kal karimi kali taibani leka bi Stakhtala Bihi. Astaghfirullah <laughs> al-Azim wa atub alayhi min zawahari wa min guyub. Astaghfirullah al-Azim wa atub alayhi min zawahari wa min guyub. Sa'utuhu bahaki wa atilahi. Akhiratan min jimlat al-manahi. Tu'utulahu min jimlat al-sagairi. Ahal kabairi wa min damairi. Afirulik bi kulimata karama. 
وما تاكرا وما بينهما فإني ألي وما وازئني وما وحملان وابدان وابدان وربي لكسفو خلما نافيها وشالياتي من شاكا إيمانيها اكسفي أسا روا غاميرا اكرمان كشافا سران غاميرا لجما جانيها ما تفار قلدا آتي من آكيري واسا فيو قلدا لكو لدا تفاكر لزاميا ربي بكم وتاسي من قلميا أبليا يا أكرامو في تيلوا Heran kasiran maka wa halawa, arik liya lehuma fiya yati, wajal fu adiwata na wa yati, abliya kani biswa kuliman yatu, ali zawa ahiru adin mahal ganyu. Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi wa rahfil alamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim maliki yaumidin. Iya kana haburu wa iya kana stahin ikdin sarata mustaqin. Surat al-Adina namta alayhum, surat al-Maktubi alayhum ala adu'in. Al-Fatiha, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi, Rasul al-Amin, Rahmanirrahim, Maliki al-Midin. Iyaka na haburu wa yaka na sa'in, Iqdina surat al-Mustaqim, surat al-Adina namta alayhum, surat al-Maktubi alayhum ala adu'in. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi, Rasul al-Amin, Rahmanirrahim, Maliki al-Midin. Iyaka na haburu yaka na stahinik dina sarata mustaqim. Sarata al-adina namta alayhim gurani magdubi alayhim ala adolim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi. Rafal alamin rahman alayhim maliki yaumidin. Iyaka na haburu yaka na stahinik dina sarata mustaqim. Sarata al-adina namta alayhim gurani magdubi alayhim ala adolim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi. Rafal alamin rahman alayhim maliki yaumidin. Ia kena hubur ia kena stain ikhlas syarat semua staking syarat salah dina nam salah ibu gurin mudah dia lagi malah doni Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi korak tu malam ini rahmanirrahim maliki yaumidin Ia kena hubur ia kena stain ikhlas syarat semua staking syarat salah dina nam salah ibu gurin mudah dia lagi malah doni Surah Al Ikhlas Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Kuhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lamilu wa Lamilu wa Lamikulu Kuhu wa Nahad Kuhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lamilu wa Lamilu wa Lamikulu Kuhu wa Nahad Kuhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lamilu wa Lamilu wa Lamikulu Kuhu wa Nahad Kuhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lamilu wa Lamilu wa Lamikulu Kuhu wa Nahad Kuhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lamilu wa Lamilu wa Lamikulu Kuhu wa Nahad Kuhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. Lamila wa lamila wa lamikulu hukufu wa nahad. Kuhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. Lamila wa lamila wa lamikulu hukufu wa nahad. So it's the word falak. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah Zubarad of falak min sarima falak. Wa min shari jasakini zawatad. Wa min shari nafasati falokal. Wa min shari hasadini zahasad. Kula uzubu rabu falak min shari ma kalak Wa min shari gasiki ni za wakad Wa min shari nafasiti kalokad Wa min shari hasadi ni za hasad Kula uzubu rabu falak min shari ma kalak Wa min shari gasiki ni za wakad Wa min shari nafasiti kalokad Wa min shari hasadi ni za hasad Kula uzubu rabu falak min shari ma kalak Wa min shari gasiki ni za wakad Wa min shari nafasiti kalokad Wa min shari hasadini za hasad. Kula uzubarabi wa falak min shari ma kalak. Wa min shari gasikini za wakad. Wa min shari nafasati palukad. Wa min shari hasadini za hasad. Kula uzubarabi wa falak min shari ma kalak. Wa min shari gasikini za wakad. Wa min shari nafasati palukad. Wa min shari hasadini za hasad. Kula uzubarabi wa falak min shari ma kalak. Wa min shari gasikini za wakad. Wa min shari nafasati palukad. Amin shari hasadini za hasad. Jotu nas. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kulauz, kulauz ibn Rabin nas, maliki nas, ilahi nas. Min shari lowa hasil kanas. Ilazi, yuwas pasufi siruni nas. Minalu jinati wa nas. Kulauz ibn Rabin nas, maliki nas, ilahi nas. Min shari lowa hasil kanas. Ilazi, yuwas pasufi siruni nas. Minalu jinati wa nas. Kulauz ibn Rabin nas, maliki nas, ilahi nas. 
من شرایط و آواسند کناز، الازی دوست به سوی سردرین ناز، من الو جناتی و ناز، الازو مرابل و بین ناز، ملکی ناز، الهی ناز، من شرایط و آواسند کناز، الازی دوست به سوی سردرین ناز، استقبال، من الو جناتی و ناز، الازو مرابل ناز، ملکی ناز، الهی ناز، من شرایط و آواسند کناز، الاز، الازی دوست به سوی سردرین ناز، من الو جناتی و ناز. Allahu Akbar. 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 Allahu to thee, O Allah, being upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I'm no longer the polytheist. Surely I turn my surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds, and also she has seen. And of this I am commanded, I am indeed of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I bring greatly unjust to myself, and I do confess my faults. So please grant me protection against all my faults. And I can grant protection against my faults but thou. And guide me to the best of morals, for none can guide me to the best of morals but thou. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thou. Salawatu Ibrahim, O Allah, make Muhammad successful and make the true followers of Muhammad successful. As thou didst make Abraham successful and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou praise and magnify the names. And Allah bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad as thou didst bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. But surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Salatu Fati, Allahumma ya Quranu Sali Allah Sayyidina Muhammad. The Fati, he will move the Gawakati, he will serve a God. Nasiru Hakiba Hakiba Hadi, La Sirat Kamu Sakiwa, La Ali, Yakafari, he, Al Mixari, Lazim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu an Muhammad wa Rasulullah. I greet you all in the greeting words of peace. As-salam alaykum. I pray that all is well with everyone and that you are all feeling good as Allah always should. My apologies for my slip up. It's amazing that in all of this time we're doing uh, but is it Surah to Nas? I still slip up on that last part because if you notice, I like the, the rhythm of Zikr. So when I get into the song of it, sometimes I slip up. So my apologies. Once again, I pray that all is well with everyone. I've been given the divine privilege and honor of presenting my beloved brother and Sheikh. Uh, an opening up for him as he has done many nights for me. I want to say that uh, if I were to make a thesis for the opening of him, it would be this. Master Farah Muhammad is the one who is quoted as saying Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam. Of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being his chief disciple and apostle is giving the credit for making this known, but it was Master Farah Muhammad that wrote this. When I think of this statement, Islam is mathematics, the immediate face that pops in my mind is Sheikh Idris Ba. In our short time of knowing him, we known him to be one that is in depth of the um, astrological, uh, astronomical and mathematical ancient sciences. And it's just something that goes naturally with him. He, when you see him, you see mathematic science. He's the walking embodiment of this phrase, Islam is mathematics. We all have been looking forward to this class. Um, I've been anxiously awaiting, and I thank him for giving me the privilege to open up for him. And if our sheikh is ready, without further delay, I will present to you our beloved sheikh, Idris Bob. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Farad. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I mean, Bismillah, Menorahim. 
A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi wa huwa al-ghaliyul adheem Giving thanks first of all to Sheikh Farad for that wonderful introduction and leading the opening of our thikrs and prayers and certainly when I grow up I want to be like this Idris body he's talking about and because that sounds like a lofty place to be, <laughs> an elevated place to be. I thank so much. Thank you so much for those kind words. And we're thankful to be here in the light of our Sheikh, Sheikh Sufi Ba, who is constantly imparting wisdom and light to us, known and unknown so that we begin to look like we actually have some intelligence. All praises to, to Allah. And we're thankful for this night being Juma night, Juma Mubarak to everyone that is here. And this is a very special and blessed night because this is the night of a significant numerological occurrence. And I want to kind of check the pulse to see whether or not anyone know of what this particular day represents. If anybody has been hearing about or seeing what this date is. If nobody knows, we got a lot of work. 777. 777 <laughs> portal. 772023. Seven. I've been waiting to ask you. I brought it up. Kung Fire Kung Shika. Zima Love Fire spoke on it. And I said, I'm going to ask Sheikh Idris Bar this evening. Inshallah. <laughs> Take it over. I mean, 77. Oh. <laughs> and I Sufi retreat it was the 14th. And, you know, Seven seven seven. Mm, yes, sir. I wonder did they pick because Queen Al Four they going to Jamaica um this weekend and um do a um something because that seven seven meridian line run through St. Anne with Bob Marley and Marcus Garvey, right mm. on through by DC. And I was gonna ask you something about that and right on down to all through the Americas, Morocco, Turtle Island, whichever name you want to call it, modern day. The Americas, that seven seven meridian. So with that, Sheikh Astaghfirullah, give thanks for, yeah. But I had to say something. Being he was like nobody knew. Give thanks. <laughs> I mean. Thank you, Sheikh Sally. I knew you was up on it, and certainly if Sister Zima mentioned it this morning, then you got the full information of the seven 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 because that sister right there, she is definitely up on it. And if she's not up on it, it can certainly be imparted to her in no period of time. So <laughs> she's definitely one that would have that information a hundredfold with respect to 777. Starting off with that, does anybody have any understanding or have been hearing about what this 777 represents or what it means? or uh, what you feel it means, or if you've gotten some type of light regarding it, this is a good time to start letting that information be known. This is my Shaykh. Oh, wa alaikum salam, Shaykh, in the house. All praise is due to Allah. I just want to say I'm so thankful that Sheikh Idris Ba is in the building tonight. I was excited because I was like this 777 portal and the timing of you being the presenter and teacher tonight, it's already lit. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. I'm the love. I mean. <laughs> I mean. Anybody else got a 77 opening? Miss me, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, um, today was my son's birthday. Oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that. And what also year? just, um, he born, you know, today, seven, 
seventh day, but he was born in 2018. 18, okay. Yeah. I'm the And it was just a significance, this seeing that continuous uh, synchronicity and reflection of that seven in creation. Just like how Sheikh was saying how, you know, you presenting the numerology at the same time that those numbers lined up. You know, my birthday is March the 22nd, 322. Uh -huh. Three, four, seven. And my son born on that synchronicity at a day showing that continuous reflection, you know, meaning that soul was meant to come through that frequency. So I see that it's, it's very beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks for that. Thank you. Well, this 777 is showing up in all kind of ways. Anybody else? Yeah, class does not have to be a monologue because we have too much light up in here. Too much. But we're going to move forward into the 777 and the rundown that is given to us. 777, of course, means the seventh month, the seventh day, and the year 2023, the two, the two, and the three equals a seven. So that's why it's called a 777 portal. Very, very significant in this time, but to really understand 777, first we gotta understand what the seven represents and what the seven comes with. And we're gonna be getting much, much more deeper into the understanding of this number seven on this coming Wednesday, because we'll be doing the numbers four, five, and six this coming Wednesday. So, no, four, five, and six. So seven will come the week after. So we're gonna give a introduction <laughs> to the energy of the number seven tonight as it relates to the 777 portal. So with the seven, the seven is one of the most, if not the most talked about number in the numeric system. It goes from the seven chakras to Roy G. Bibb, the seven colors, to the seven heavens and the seven hells, our Fatiha with the seven ayats, la ilaha illallah, seven syllables, sevens are just everywhere <laughs> in every, every aspect in a very spiritually dynamic way. The number seven has shown up in every culture, every significant culture that we have produced and existed in. So seven is obviously a prominent number, but what does it represent? The number seven is an inward number. It deals with internal work. And this is a work, as we talked about before, that a lot of people don't really take the time to do. It deals with the shadow work and going within, getting into those feelings and those spaces where there's darkness. Sometimes it's negative thoughts. Sometimes it's a repeat playing of things and vibrations that's keeping you and holding you in a certain pattern, which you're not going to break unless you start doing that seven type work. It means going into that deep soul space and really beginning to understand what is going on there and what is moving there and what is preventing you are putting forth blockages for you to actually connect with your highest light. That's what makes this number so powerful because once you do that, then you are free to move forward and connect with that divine light, which is great because Sheikh Sufi, when he talks about this thing of purification. And I know purification just keeps coming up. Every month we're talking about purification. Ramadan, we're talking about purification. 
Hodge we're talking about purification. Beginning of the year, we're talking about leaving the old behind and purifying so that we can start a new year. We're constantly talking about purification. Stop for a lobby heat, as Sheikh Farah just read for us in the opening. All of these things are talking about getting to a place of clarity, cleaning out all of those things that are impure, that are heavy, that are weighing us down and not allowing us to lift up and lift off into the divine light. We can't begin to do the work that we really need to do until we get to a place of purification and to a certain extent, get rid of a lot of the baggage that's holding us back. So purification always comes first and that's very much connected to this seven energy. Because if we're not gonna do the purification work, then we're not going to receive what they're talking about with the 777 portal or any other portal because we're too blocked up, locked up and bogged down with our NAFs. So that purification must take place. Then once that takes place, the seven deals with the analytical and the logical mind, the investigative mind, getting to the root of what's going on is a lot of the seven energy. That's what we're looking at with respect to the 777 portal. Now, when we look online and we listen to different people and they're talking about Manifestation, this is a good time for manifestation and for experiencing higher light and a lot of these things. To an extent, that is true. But again, if the purification process has not taken place, to make it clearer, if the work hasn't been done, then we're not going to be able to manifest and experience the way that we would like to. The other thing that has to be said with respect to that is when we're talking about a 777 portal, the manifestation is more of an inward level, which is not quite as glamorous because we want to see and want to behold manifestation of things outside of ourselves, manifestation of things that we're able to visually witness, and even in some cases, other people to visually witness around us. And that comes, but first the inner work has to be done in order for that to be experienced. So as we're talking about this number seven and this 777 portal, it's really talking about getting ready to do this work on the inside so that at some point, sooner than later, we'll begin to see the manifestation of what has taken place inside on the outside of us and in our environment. Does anybody have any comments or questions about those things that were shared so far? I know somebody got something on that. Bismillah, Sheikh. Bismillah. Yes, it's beautiful what you was talking about. I just, you know, for myself, like we say, sometimes we have to go down to go up, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we already in that process of purification, when these type of alignments come into place, we get more of the the the, the best um, effects from that energetic alignment. And a lot of the times, those that is not truly in alignment and all of us are subjugated to that energy period no matter who we are truly right. what level that we at it reflects to us in a different way maybe it hits us in a way that makes us truly have to go in forcibly mm -hmm. um and we take it as though that is something negative happening but really it's that portal opening and you receiving that download in a way that is meant for you to receive right inshallah amen
Absolutely, alhamdulillah. You have to go down before you go up. You have to go in before you can see the outward results. That's real key. Very good point. Very good point. Anybody else? Assalamu alaikum. Oh, wow, alaikum salam. I'm going to sit back now. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to kind of comment and ask a question. You know, we know seven to be related to a lot of things that have to do with seven, you know, the seven chakras, you know, the seven colors of the rainbow, um, you know, just God and man intertwined, um, those kind of things. I remember back in the 90s when I first really got into um, getting into the sacred numerology around seven was when Erica Badu had her oldest son and she named him seven. And I was reading an article where they was asking her, why did she name her son seven? And she said, because it is a divine number that cannot be divided. Mm. And going on, I just had this connection to just learn more about that number. So just based on your knowledge base of numerology, is there several other examples that comes to mind as to, you know, seven number being represented in, in things in abundance? In abundance. Well, if you're talking about abundance, one of the things or one of the ways that seven comes up is uh, Sheikh Sufi had put forth a video as he's put forth many videos but he was talking about in Revelations where it talks about the seven candlesticks and the seven churches. Very, very powerful, powerful imagery. And of course, when you're speaking of sevens, it's always talking about one light because it's talking about the seven lights and the seven lights that are within us is the seven chakra system. And once we activate each of those seven lights within us, then we're able to see manifest abundance all around us. And so the seven is what helps us to tap into that so that we can see that manifestation. The other thing that's important that comes to mind immediately with the seven is the seven days of creation. The creation process itself is seven days, but the actual creating is only six days and the seventh day is the day of rest. So that's the seventh, the, on that seventh day is that time that you go within, which is right in line with what we're talking about now. You go within and you do that inner reflection and that inner work and get inner rest, which is key to manifestation as well. You really hit on something with that. One thing that we have to remember with this energy of seven, particularly in this time cycle, because there's always a heaviness that exists in our environment and what's going on around us and some of the madness that's taking place in the world that we can't ignore as much as we would like to. So that all has a weight on us. And sometimes that lends to us not taking the time to take care of ourselves. This is a key time. And we spoke about this at the beginning of the year because this is a seven year, 2023. This is a, obviously a year for reflection and for taking care of yourself and evaluating what's taking place within your vessel so that you can be well because you, you create and you manifest from the state that you're in. So if you're in a state of disease or disalignment, the manifestations around you and in your environment and in your world is going to be reflective of what's taking place on the inside. So this is the time to really take care of yourself and take stock of what's going on within you. One, so that you're able to fully show up on this planet. And secondly, so that you don't leave this planet before you're supposed to and before you get your work done. So self-maintenance is key right now and key during this year and even more key during this 777 portal. I hope I answered that. 
Yes, you did. Give thanks. I mean. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment? Bismillah, Sheikh. Bismillah. So uh, you and I were kind of laughing earlier. Um, and this, everything that was just said kind of culminates everything we're saying because a lot of times when we miss this new age of the secret and the law of attraction and manifestation, people always uh, like to talk about the outer use of seeing the power display, what they call manifestation, but purification is something nobody likes to talk about. I think, um, you know, on a day like this, a group of cats sounding deep would love to be somewhere in a coffee shop, drinking seven <laughs> cups of coffee, eating seven cookies, you know, with seven <laughs> danishes. <laughs> You know, taking <laughs> taking seven sips every time they say something, you know, but the the real truth is that that seven is complete purification. And if purification happens, then manifestation goes because we're naturally creators. We're naturally, we're always manifesting. It's not something we can undo. As long as our heart is beating, we're here, we're manifesting. But the more pure that we are internally, the better our manifestations will be. So if we just focus completely on purification, just like the book says, seek ye first the kingdom and all of these things will be added. Everything else will happen on its own. And I think right. that's just a key thing to remember, inshallah. I mean, very, very key. Very key. Thanks so much for that insight. Talking about them wise gurus. Getting a 777 on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Anybody else have a comment or a question? One of the other things we want to say regarding this energy is that everything moves on a cycle. We will repeat that over and over and over again. It's all about cycles. One of the best things that we can do is to begin to write down and journal what's going on with us during these key moments and key portals and key events that take place in our lives. Journals are absolutely important. Why am I bringing that up? Because contrary to popular belief, the 777 portal is nothing new. The name might be new. The introduction to it, the way that it's being presented is new, but it's not a new phenomenon. Nine years ago in 20, what is it, 14? Around this time, we had a 777 portal. We had one again in 2005, 777 portal. The question is, and we can keep going back and back and back, where were you? What were you doing? And what was taking place during that cycle? By journaling, you get to see each cycle, how it's built upon based on what was in place the previous cycle. It's a building process. It's like math. One of the things about math is when you're learning formulas, if you miss one step, everything that comes forth after that is in error because you missed a step. It's built on making sure you have a certain foundation intact and going step by step on that foundation. That's part of the meaning behind the step pyramid in Egypt. It's talking about taking, taking steps in a step-by-step -step process to reach a goal of higher light. But with mathematics and understanding that we have to record what's taking place so that when we get to that next time period, we're building upon where we were in the previous cycle. And this is true of all of the cycles, whether it be a 111 cycle or a 222 cycle in February when the year adds up to a two, et cetera. These cycles are constantly going on. It's not new, but each one has its treasure. The treasure of this 777 cycle is that one is in the sign of cancer. Two, 
It's in the hottest, one of the hottest times of the year. And according to what they're saying on the news, this is one of the hottest times on the planet. It's heating up everywhere. <laughs> Records in the 110s and up into the teens, the, the um, you know, 115, 116 in places. It's hot. So during that, when all of that is taking place, you also get a 777 cycle that lands on a Friday. Interestingly enough, Juma Day. And in the month of July, which has always been represented as the month of the mother, which is why Independence Day was established on the 4th of this month, which is a whole nother story. But the point is all of that's taking place right now during this portal. The other thing that's, that's important with respect to this portal is it's not just a one-time thing this month because we have a 777 portal now. We also have a 777 portal coming up like Sheikh Sally brilliantly discovered on the 16th of this month. The one in the six is also a seven. And we'll be at the butterfly retreat turned up on that particular day. So that'll be a powerful day as well. Then we have another one on July the 25th, the two and the five is also a seven. So it's like a three tier process as this portal begins to move forward. Right now it's a matter of making sure that, like I said, we're doing the purification work, but also keeping ourselves in a space where we're uh, positive, optimistic, and not allowing negativity to wear us down. And from what I heard, word on the street is, Sheikh Sufi is gonna be talking about that on Sunday and I can't wait. <laughs> but this idea of constantly being positive and keeping a positive mindset is key during this time. Anyone have any comments or thoughts on that? No comments or thoughts. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. All praise and assalamu alaikum, son. Now, inshallah, could you tell us about uh, the sign of cancer real quick and the importance of, why, of the, the seven in cancer? Ah, 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 ah. The sign of cancer, you say? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> The sign of cancer. Cancer is one of my favorite signs. <laughs> I'll just say that. But the sign of cancer is the fourth sign of the zodiac after Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and then cancer. Cancer is seen as the foundation planet or one of the foundations. Four is a number of foundations. So cancer is seen as foundation. And it also represents, of course, the great mother or the divine feminine from which all creation and manifested physical form comes. She is the master builder that builds life in nine months without tools. I'm not trying to get Masonic, but <laughs> that's part of the science behind this idea of the great mother, the master builder, the mason or masons, all of that comes under this energy that is cancerium, which is considered to be an intuitive energy. Of course, it's a feminine sign. And of course, it lines up with in numerology, the number two, but it's a receptive energy. And this is one of the most intuitive of the 12 signs is cancer. So with this energy of this seven, 
seven seven portal opening up during this season of cancer is actually bringing us back into and causing us to reflect upon the great womb or the darkness or the void from which we emerged is also causing us to look at the places of darkness that has produced some of the results that we're experiencing. And once we look at that and shine light on that, we're able to bring that forward in a new light. That's some of what the Cancerian energy represents. And of course, it's also about being very balanced, um, not to the extreme of Libra, but the number two obviously represents balance and extremes. And so Gemini represent twins, but not necessarily extremes. Cancer represents a balance of different extremes. So that's important to understand with respect to this 777 as well, because it's reminding us to be in a place of balance. And we have spent so much of our life doing the external, participating in the external, and looking at how we look and whether or not, you know, we are presenting ourselves in a certain way physically that we haven't taken the time to look at what's taking place on the inside. So that's what this represents as well in terms of that void and that darkness and that divine feminine energy, that Rahman, that all of manifestation comes from. Cancer represents that in the zodiac. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. I wanted to share this because it really stood out. So while you were talking, I was inspired to go into the Quran to the first chapter and the oh. seventh verse on the seventh page and the seventh verse, which is uh, number 33. Mm -hmm. And it says, he said, oh, Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had informed them of their names, he said, did I not tell you that I know the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you have concealed. Mm. Powerful, powerful, powerful. That's so, a book right there, sister. Yeah. <laughs> So when I read that, I was like, wait, this is the 33rd. I was like, come on. Like, and that's a master number two. So, you know, everything is in alignment. Everything is everything in alignment. Everything is in alignment. Yeah. That's key. That's key. So what we're talking about is, you know, uh, revealing, you know, what's concealed. When we talk and about these sacred numbers. You hit the nail on the head with that. That's correct. Revealing what has been hidden and concealed. And on that same theme, if we go to the, what is it, the seventh chapter of the Quran, that is entitled the elevated places. Hmm. And I thought that was interesting as well, building on what you just put forth is because one, the step-by-step -step process from the first chapter going up to the seventh chapter, representative of the elevated places, to reach that place of elevation requires us to do the work to be elevated. We gotta go through something in order to get to the point where we can experience being elevated. That's profound. And so that's where we began to get to the place where we access that information that has been hidden or sometimes it's in plain sight, but we're not able to decipher it because we haven't quite got there yet. So that is a very, very magnificent observation, sister. Thank you for that. 
I mean, Jack. Somebody put in the chat that Sura 70 is the ways of ascent. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yes. Yes, it is. Elevation again. Then I keep telling y'all, well, I'm sure y'all already know by now, there are keys in this Quran that are profound. And numerologically, just like, I'm sure, I'm not sure who does, Sheikh Farah put that in there, talking about this 70th chapter. If we're able to get to a place where we marry the numerology, well, it's already married to the Quran as well as all of the text, but where we're able to identify these symbols and these codes that tie all of these teachings together, then we'll really begin to see how all of this is all interwoven. All of these sciences are all interwoven together. It's not happenstance that the 70th chapter would contain that, or that the seventh chapter would contain that, or the chapter that uh, Sister Zima just, or Sheikh, Sheikh Azima just gave us, is all connected, dealing with mastery, master numbers, the number seven, et cetera, is all tied together. And it's talking about getting to a place where we're able to raise up. Like Imam Shiraz said, we got to go down to go up. We got to go in to go out. And sometimes in the circle of knowledge, we got to go east to go west. <laughs> it works like that. It really does work like that. Our journey that could take, what, two days end up taking 40 years? Part of the process. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Anyone have any questions or comments on that? Come on with it, don't hold back. Assalamu alaikum, it's me again. Come on with it, come on with it. Last time, because I'm on this stay, I'm just picking up all my books and turned it to the seventh page and it's blowing <laughs> my mind right now. <laughs> yes, yes. So look, I went to um, the Wisdom of Rumi book that I have uh -huh. and I turned it to the seventh page and it says, come and see me. Come and mm. see me. Today I am away, out of this world, hidden away from me and I. I grabbed a dagger, made slices of me from myself, since I belong not to me, not to anyone. I am so sorry for not having done this cutting away before. It was my soul's mind and not mine. I have no idea how my inner fire is burning today. My tongue is on a different flame. I see myself with a hundred faces, and to each one I swear it is me. Surely I must have a hundred faces. I confess none is mine. I have no face. Mm -hmm. So when you talked about seven also being about purifying, you know, and doing the work, you know, that's what, you know, we talk about um, just having a different flame and, and knowing that inner fire, you know, we're, we're in that energy. I think that speaks to also what we're what we're talking about so i just wanted to share that you know and let that kind of sit on your mind oh, oh that is incredible incredible again the seventh page is talking about an inward process it's still talking about inward doing inward work so that you can arrive at that place where you're, you're actually able to go and visit and witness with the divine in those elevated places, alhamdulillah. Yes, that is a profound teaching. The, the seven, seven is key because like sister just did, you can go to a book and look at the seventh page of a book. You can look at the seventh chapter of a book. You can count and look at the seventh word. There are keys everywhere everywhere with the seven so all we have to do once we understand that then we could utilize that as a tool the seventh verse of the chapters of the quran any of those chapters that have seven verses the seventh verse of the kasai 
any Kasai that has more than most of them have more than seven verses. But all of those contain keys that help us unlock this inner work and this inner process that we have to begin to really engage ourselves in fully so that we can get manifest the results. Awesome, awesome. Anyone else have a question or a comment or observation? I know y'all been hearing about this 777. Come on with it. Well, I have a I want to know, Ben, they, they, they holding a 77 next weekend in Jamaica. And they first started the retreat another day and switched it. But that, I asked Shaker Zima this morning what they heard Shake Sufi do that on purpose, on the love. You don't know about it how to answer. I would disagree. Let me tell you something. Uh, thanks for that, Shake Sally. Did y'all work that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm blaming Shake Sufi and Sister Zima for that one. <laughs> Shake Azima for that one. I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> That worked out perfectly, <laughs> perfectly. But you know what's interesting though? That weekend, next weekend, everything is going off next weekend. I have like about three other events and travel events from other people that I know that's taking place on that weekend. It is a real, real hot weekend. And obviously, as we just mentioned earlier, it's the middle weekend of this 777 portal because it's, the, it's today, it's the 16th and the 25th. So that weekend of the 16th, everything is jumping off that weekend, man. So yes, that's a great weekend because of that energy. It's also a great weekend because in ancient Egyptian time, it's right around what they call the rising of Sirius above the horizon, the helical horizon of Sirius, as they call it, which was an annual event that took place, very, very sacred event that takes place every single year. And it's right in the energy of that as well. And then as we move forward from that weekend, we start going into the energy of um, of Leo, which takes place, of course, after cancer. So that's a very, very powerful time. And of course, Leo is ruled by the sun and has a lot of that, that I am this energy or I will energy to it. So yeah, and all of that's, that's part of it. And again, planetarily, when we look at the different vortexes and the different ley lines and how the energy is moving with respect to the grid lines of this planet, being on one of those or near one of those power points during this time is very significant also for us to access and deal with that energy. But again, make sure you get that work done first so that you can really experience that energy. I mean, I mean, I mean. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum um, salam. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to share because too many things started aligning um, and I'm laughing to myself a little bit because I went to a museum exhibit earlier today and it was called The Vault. Um, and it featured one of my friends um, is a is a collector. And so it, it was four black collectors of black art from all time. And when you first enter the vault, they arranged all the masks and the paintings so that the eyes are facing you. <laughs> so I was just thinking of that page um, with all the eyes. And then I'm thinking about how you said how it's so hot right now. Yes. Um, and for Sacred Women alumni, 
were this would be the the month of sacred healing and that's guarded by Sekhmet which you mm. might think of that more like Leo but Sekhmet is about purification mm -hmm. um and then the purification makes me think of um being in Tuba with uh Shay Sufi Ba and I remember walking in the sand and it being so hot so so mm -hmm. hot it was burning our feet and I just remember him saying it's purification <laughs> and then like <laughs> thinking about like how hot it is outside and so it is it's just purifying our bodies um alhamdulillah <laughs> alhamdulillah thank you for that sister and with it being hot let me say this also yes it's hot yes the planning is is heating up yes it's purifying but make sure you go outside and get in nature i know it's hot you don't necessarily have to be in it long, but what a lot of people end up doing is they sit in the house under the air conditioner and they don't get out in nature at all. So if you're experiencing some of that, even if you get out for a little while, the early part of the day or the later part of the day, make sure that you get out and get some of this energy because it's not just heat that's being disseminated. Information is also being disseminated as well that we need to tap into. Remember, we're sun beings as well. And sun beings is a lot of times more so than any other kind of being that helps us to grow. So there is energetic signatures and codings that's being sent forth from the sun that we're not going to get the best benefit from just sitting up in the house all the time. So make sure that we get out and take part of that as well. I mean, we don't necessarily want our feet to be burned in the sand, but we do want to make sure that we get some of the energy of the season so that we can move forward. Sheikh Sufi also put in the chat, that on the retreat, which I know everybody is going to be present for, that we're going to have a 777 portal night on Saturday night, possibly at midnight. So everybody wants to be present to get some of that energy. That's going to be most divine indeed. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Because, because three is a magic number. There are three sevens right now. And we just ended your class on the number three. All phrases 21. When you add three sevens equals three as well. So it can, it, were you, are, are you able, were you going to get into the connection to 21? And seven and, and order three and the seven is not so long. Hmm. I mean, yes. What that represents in terms of the number sevens, for those that understand what Sheikh Mustafa is talking about, if you add the seven, 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 each of those sevens together give you 21, and we reduce that number of 21 by adding the two and the one together, which gives you the number three. So that would be true on today, on the 16th, as well as on the 25th, it adds up to a three on that particular day. Now, threes is significant because what you're doing with these two numbers is you're putting together the power of the seven and the three, which is an intense combination. One, because both of them are odd numbers. Two, because of what each of those numbers bring. In our class on Wednesday, we were talking about how there are so many different references to the number three. Uh, there might be more with the seven, but there's a lot of references to the number three. Three is a charm. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, took three sips of coffee when he drank. Um, a, B, C one, two, three, there's so many different references and phrases that go along with the number three 
just as with the number seven. And the number three, what you're bringing into being with that, one is a trinity, for example, the triple goddess, the triple doctors of space, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, um, mother, father, child, mm -hmm. Joseph, Mary, Jesus, <laughs> you know, all of these things that are related to the number three. But threes represent more so than anything, expression and communication is key with the three. Obviously, there has to be some type of intellect and light with respect to the three um, to have conversation and be a communicator and be expressive. But that expression is the number that the 777 adds up to. So the question becomes, what <laughs> is being expressed and communicated as a result of going through the process of this 777 three times uh -huh. in this month? What is coming forth and what is being expressed? Now it's going to be different for each of us on an individual level because a lot of that ties to what our personal numeric coding is, what day we were born on, or what month or what year or what our name adds up to, et cetera, et cetera. So there'll be various different effects based on that. But generally and universally, what it represents is this is an intensely spiritual and sacred time. And it is an intense time to get connected with the divinity that is within you, that is you. All of our attention and focus needs to be on that. Now, I don't have to tell anybody in this class that because we're walking a Sufi class or walking a Sufi path, rather, in a Sufi class on a Friday night dara. So obviously there's a focus and an intent on that source, that being that essence from which we come. But it's even turned up more during this 777 vibration. And the way that we express that now is going to be essential and a strong foundation and building block on how we're going to move forward in our future. So in this time, our expression needs to be positive, optimistic, and things that we want to see manifested within ourselves and manifested around us. That has to be our only focus right now. Because if we're not focusing on that with this intensity, it can spiral us downward. And we're going to have to dig ourselves up out of that. And certainly Sister Zima, um, <laughs> Sheikh Azima knows exactly what I'm talking about. She's an individual that was born on a three. A two and a one equals a three. So she's familiar with that type of energetic expression. Threes are energetic, they're sociable, they communicate well, they work well and generally they have a lot of siblings or people that they're close to and connected to. They're social butterflies, which is I'm sure why she's doing the butterfly retreat. <laughs> and I'm doing a lot. So it all ties together. But this 777 is really focused through that number three in terms of the way that it's going to express ourselves, express itself through us and in our environment. So we want to be aware of that and move accordingly. Somebody got a question or a comment, I know. I do. Salam. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is crazy because, you know, I have to share this because, first of all, you know, we've been doing the WKFK Kun Fai Kun radio, and this is actually the seventh month of, you know, anniversary of us doing the show, number one. But what's interesting is, you know, I pull a, um, a, a tarot card every morning and 
Yesterday and today, I pulled the same card twice, which is the chariot card, which happens oh. to be the card of deck, which has to do with um in this upright position. It's talking about control, willpower, success, action, and determination. And then the reverse is self-discipline, opposition, and lack of direction. So we still talking about the same thing, but I just I just had to share that I pulled that card yesterday and today, which has never happened before. So that energy is very, very strong and very intense, very strongly. And that also means that you tuned in. You tuned in. I hundred a lot. <laughs> you're not going to get that if you're not connected. So <laughs> that's just clarification. <laughs> No more music about a sucker. Sucks a lot. <laughs> so a lot. lot. <laughs> yes, yes. Anybody else got a comment or a question? Or a concern even? Yeah, there is so much to this. Mom Sharad say that he is a three light path. Mm. So you really experiencing some intensity right about now. This 777, I'm going to tell you, it turns up things. <laughs> I heard somebody do a mm hmm. It, it turns up things in your life, man. <laughs> so be prepared for that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's all purification. It's all purification. That's the way you want to look at it. Shay Idris, us talking about the number seven, it makes me think, I mean, I know we have our master numbers, you know, we have our 11s and 22s, 33, 44. Um, but would you say that like seven is kind of an exception to that rule? Because it, it kind of feels like it has its own uh, master attributes that... Um, and I guess the question I want to ask you is, do you do you think in your experience of doing astrological um, breakdowns for people over the years and studying the numbers, like, do you also feel like people who have a seven life path number or, you know, their birth date is a seven or what, you know, however that goes, do you feel like they still have some of the same type of um, challenges as people who are born with the master numbers? To answer your question in a word, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, let me go back to the first question. The first question was, could it be considered a master number or on that vibration because it's powerful and intense? Yes. And that could be said about a number, a, uh, quite a few numbers. The number one, the number three, the number seven, the number nine. Now, I would put more emphasis, just like you did, on this number seven, because in every culture, you cannot get around the vibration and the energy that's presented in that number seven. It is as close to, if not a master number, as you can get in terms of the effect, because of the intensity that's in that number. And that's a good word for the number seven is intense, strong intensity. When you look at it from the perspective of numerology and, and astrology, seven is represented in astrology, some would say by the planet Neptune in the <clears throat> East Indian system is uh, Ketu, which is actually the South Node. And back in the day, when we look at the number seven, the seven was also two numbers. It was a correction. The moon represented two numbers. The moon represented the number two and the number seven. So one would represent the full moon, one would represent the new moon. And based on what material you're looking at, it kind of goes back and forth. But 
my belief is based on what I've been given is that the seven is more reflective of the new moon and the two is more reflective of the full moon because the full moon is full light and that's more reflective of the two. And the new moon is that dark energy, that dark moon, which is where you do the inner internal work. So that would be more aligned with the number seven to me if we're looking at it from the perspective of the moon. But it's intense because doing that inner work, it takes time, it takes discipline, and you really have to commit yourself to facing the darkness. And that's not comfortable. Facing your dark Vader, looking in your dark mirror and seeing sometimes aspects and characteristics of yourself that are not very pleasing. And doing that work, you know, it doesn't leave you in a comfortable place, but what you want to do is begin to shine light in those areas and begin to work on that so that where one time it's something that is a weakness, but it's developed into a strength. Give an example about that. Michael Jordan, I'm sure everybody knows who Michael Jordan is, arguably one of the greatest basketball players ever. And if you go back and listen to people who played with Michael Jordan early on, they talk about how, and people who play basketball are familiar with the sport will understand, Michael Jordan could not really dribble with his left hand. Whenever he went to the basket, he's always going to the basket on the right hand side dribbling with his right hand. Believe me, people will begin to, they notice these type of things and they try to look at what could be a weakness and exploit your weakness. They talk about how he's one of the only players that took what was his weakness and turned it into a strength where he became even better going to the left than he was going to the right. That was a weakness that he had, and he took it and flipped it and turned it into a strength. And that helped to make him somewhat um, dominant and unstoppable. That same process could be done with us. We do this work, and we really begin to look at some of these dark areas or our dark self or our negative self and really begin to face that and begin to cast that out with that astaghfirullah bihi and the process of thickers and remembrance that we have been given in a period of time we'll begin to see that weakness actually dissipate and the light emerge as a result of it so yes there is master level challenges <laughs> with respect to this number seven and even though it's not technically a double number or a double seven, which is a master number as well, seven, seven is a master number, but that number seven alone, it does carry the intensity of, of the master number. That's the roundabout way to answer your question. <laughs> Give thanks, Shakun. Zagran. Who else has a question, comment, or observation? Stop for last shake. I got one more shake. She said, obviously, you were just speaking about the new moon, and how next week is the new moon, and the two sevens, and the, the number seven in Arabic, the adjad is a Z. It looks like two sevens. That's just the observation. I mean, two sevens, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The letter Z, which makes you wonder where that symbol in the English language actually came from. Of course, we know, but definitely the Arabic system predates the English system by far. 
Assalamu alaikum, say. Wa alaikum salam. So when you were talking about the, uh, the dominance and the process that can make us indestructible in the same way, one of the things the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said about the name Shabazz, of course, you know, we know that it comes from the Sabah in Arabic seven. Uh, and he said that, you know, of course, in that history, the one of the reasons why the name Shabazz was given is because in light of certain events, the indestructible nature of, uh, of our DNA and so forth was revealed. So uh, that seven shows up once again, even in the name Shabazz. I just wanted to point that out. I'm sorry, how many letters is in that name? Oh, wow. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Didn't even peep that one, Shaykh. <laughs> and building on um, <laughs> and building on the uh, Sheikh's last point, Sheikh Mustafa, it's got two Z's in there too. Oh wow, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, those sevens pop up some are everywhere. Some of everywhere. Well, on the purification note, Istakhullah be he the seven syllables in the pronunciation of that name. So going back to the beginning, and you were saying that the real core of seven was purification. We know that, you know, I haven't heard Sheikh really say anything was superior in terms of the Kasai's to Astaghfirullah Bihi in terms of purification, which so happens to bring 70 is the equivalent of 70,000 Astaghfirullahs. Once again, mm. so Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's seven syllables. I'll stop for lobby he. I just counted it. <laughs> You're right on it. Oh, man. So that, so that Islam is mathematics is probably not just a cliche, Jake. Right? It's probably <laughs> something literal to that. Just maybe. Probably not. I'm going to say probably not. I'm <laughs> Nothing like the wisdom, man. Nothing like the wisdom. Light on top of light. Anybody else have any thoughts? Oh, I'm looking at the master thought. Bismillah. You, you muted Sheikh Sufi, you stuck for that. I don't know if he could hear us. Maybe not. Until Sheikh Sufi gets back, anybody else have a comment or a thought? I know we said a lot tonight and covered a lot of area with respect to the seven, the seven, and the seven. Three times great. Three times the intensity, which means three times the manifestation. Shake while we're waiting on our beloved Shake to show back up. I went kind of on a, you know, you, you and Shake have this way of awakening the, the, the mad scientists in me. So I went in the, uh, in the Supreme Wisdom. And any of you all that have the Supreme Wisdom lessons, go to the seventh point of each of the lessons. So the seventh actual fact. <laughs> go to the seventh question in student enrollment, the seventh in the lost final Muslim set. When you go, and you see the sevens is gonna, I mean, it's gonna open up all uh, kind of things. Go ahead and read and, it to uh, us. So I, I just give the first one because it's too long to go into all of them. But the seventh actual fact is the Atlantic Ocean covers ah. 41, what, 41 million 321 square miles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know if we add that number up, it comes up to the end number 11, uh, which you, you taught so brilliantly on at the uh, tour last year. And um, you, you know, taught about the, the one and the, the God and then the reflection of God. So that can't be attained without purification. Right. So I think that's, 
I think that's pretty plain. Um, and so then if you go into the student enrollment, the seventh question is how much of the useful land is used by the original man? Now that is a whole subject in itself. I'm gonna leave that yeah. alone, but yeah. but I just it's it's so much implication there, Shay. Thank you. Well, both of those examples, one dealing with land and one dealing with water. Mm, alhamdulillah. Powerful. Very powerful. Sheikh Sally's, no, this was, um, I guess I want to say Sister Ayeshe, one of the sisters said that the number seven in supreme mathematics, I'm sure we know that the number seven is God in supreme mathematics. Is anybody familiar with that? Absolutely. <laughs> Just want to make sure I got some witnesses in the house. You know, that's right. <laughs> with the mathematics. The thing. Yes, indeed. And we have the seven seals of Solomon. Seven seals of Solomon. Ah, oh, me. And Sheikh Supi does those baths for us, those seven seal baths. Powerful, powerful. Yeah, sevens, it's a lot in that number seven. And of course, la ilaha illallah. Can't leave that out. Shake in the uh, original rules of instructions to the laborer, you know, and has the 13 different points. In the seventh point, it says, is where we get the, the, uh, popular cliche that we use in the nation, quickness, fast moving, cleanliness, purification, internally and externally, right down to the modern times. That's in the seventh point of the instruction to the laborers. So well, that's purification. Yes, that's, I mean, what's cleared in cleanliness internally, externally. So he's saying purification internally and externally. Ah, oh, me. What a light that's coming forth tonight. We gonna have to put this in a bottle. This is Eli, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam, Shay. What I was trying to say is that uh, Sheikh Ahmed Obama has a weird, based on the number seven that I've never taught before. Oh. And uh, it's very powerful. The weird is based on the number seven. It has seven verses uh, and prayers that you recite, and you recite each each prayer seven times. Wow! So uh, if we have time at the retreat, we may we might teach that in Tala. We shall see. But definitely, we will go over the seven seals of Solomon, and the magic square of seven by seven at the retreat, inshallah. Oh, me, looking forward to that, Sheikh. Looking forward to all of that. But, all beloved of Sheikh, the above. Since, beloved Sheikh Porter, can I ask a question? Is that the Sabun Taki Sheikh, does that have something to do with the number seven? The Sabun Taki that Sheikh Akwa Dubamba did? Yeah, most definitely because uh, the Sabun Taki is uh, the Al Fatiha, which is seven verses with seven other powerful verses from the Quran. We could teach that, but the Arabic of the people is, is probably not ready for that prayer. The other one is a little bit easier, inshallah. Amen. Amen. All right, that's more, more light coming forth at the retreat. More light. I believe if we keep this up, we're going to have 100 people at the retreat by Allah's grace. Ah, oh, mean. Any other comments on this 11? Excuse me, on this 777.
I do know that Sheikh Sufi put in the chat today that we're supposed to be saying 777 times Sallallahu Allah Muhammad today. And we still got time in the midst of this 777 energy. So it would be good to make sure that we do that. <laughs> One thing I would like to say is that it will be a blessing for all of us. You can pick any zikr you like, whether it's the name Allah or Bismillah Rahim or Astaghfirullah, La ilaha la or Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad. During this portal time of 777, every night, at least up until the retreat, it's, it's a blessing to recite a zikr 777 times every night to tap into that energy and the power. We recommend the uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad 777 times, or the Bismillah Rahim 777, or even a Stock for Allah, or even Allahu Akbar 777. It depends on what you are uh, trying to manifest with this 777 zikr. If you're trying to manifest abundance, we recommend a stock for Allah 777 times. If you're trying to remove something that's blocking you, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim 777 times. If you're trying to have all three, if you're trying to have a removal of obstacles and abundance, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad 777 times. Oh, mean. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know about some of you, but I can use all of those things personally. <laughs> like they, Assalamu alaikum. Beloved Sheikh Sufi, can I add one? Most yeah, definitely, us beloved. That. You got the title Sheikh too. Yeah, you told us, <laughs> taught us that la ilaha la la is the, <laughs> the beginning of the path. La 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 is the end of the path. We come to the conclusion it's the middle of the path. And la 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 la, seven syllables, seven chakras. La 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 la, 777 times. So that's it. I think everybody should be on the same vibration. Uh, recite the la 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 la, la 777 times at night. I think we all should do that. And then when we get to the retreat, Around at, we'll try to start at midnight. We will all recite 777 times La Ilaha Allah because the Sheikh has spoken, uh, it has seven syllables. Go ahead, Sheikh Sally. Sheikh Sally from the baseline is good. <laughs> and that'll put all of us on. The, and if you just want to, no, I ain't going to say that because I don't want to get too excited. But 777 La Ilaha Allah is the recommendation for everybody every night going into. Uh, the uh the the retreat and the 777 group zikr it's it's already lit thank you Sheikh Sala thank you that is the best zikr for 777 I don't know how I overlooked that one I mean I mean hello the say can I add on add on to that cipher just one little piece so something uh dealing with the purification, speaking to the formula of life that Sheikh always asks us to teach on, you know, vitality equals power minus obstruction. When we, when we purify, you're talking about blockages being removed. Sheikh just gave formulas to remove blockages. So continuously going through the lessons um, is interesting. The speed shows up. Watch this. I'm just mentioning something real quick. The... Um, Okay, in the seventh question in lesson one, it says, why does the devil keep our people illiterate? <laughs> okay, we know that the lack of knowledge itself blocks us from knowing self. That's a block that if it's removed, that would produce wonders. But in the lesson two, watch this, it says, how fast does our planet travel? It asks the, the, concerning the speed of the planet traveling, then when you get to the 16th point, it says, who is the 5% and the 4th part of the earth? 
And we know this talking about the poor righteous teachers and all of that. Then when you get to, uh, it's interesting how all of this starts to deal with speed and, 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 and like almost like God technology or something. Because in the problem book, the last point, in the 16th uh, problem, our earth travels 1,037 and one third miles per hour. And she travels around the sun in 365 and one fourth days. So he's asking about the speed again. So I think that the lesson in this is in order to go back to the seventh point in instruction to the laborers to be quickness, quickness, fast moving. In order to really be fast moving and more quick, we have to be clean internally, internally. So that ends up equal in the formula of life, remove obstruction, V equals P minus O. Once obstruction is removed, vitality increases. So we really want to speed up our development then we need to do with sake totals today and utilize this number seven, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, thanks for that. And that basically, what I got from that is you're not going to be able to move fast if you have too much weight. So the process is oh, getting man. rid of the weight so that you can move as quickly as you need to move. And the less weight you have, the higher you can go up in the wave of ascension. So that's tied together as well. I mean for that. Any other final closing thoughts or remarks? Don't want to leave anybody out. Got a good group tonight. Some of these voices I haven't heard in a minute, but I'm seeing these names. For those who don't know, I'm becoming a lot more Zoom literate. <laughs> Well, Sheikh Idris Ba, I just like to quote our prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, being his Juma. All of us, male or female, represent, I see in this darn, for anybody out there in YouTube land, be like, that you know, like, stay out of line in the spirit of prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. One alert man, and I add woman, is harder on the devil than a thousand ignorant worshipers. One alert man is harder on the devil or woman than a thousand ignorant worshipers. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. I've learned also being Islamic and Muslim, the science of seven is God, it's not good, it's compatible for Islam and science to go together. And Honorable mm -hmm. Elijah Muhammad, also said, study the star canopy all the days of Almighty God. Study the star canopy of Almighty God all the days of your life. And you'll yes. be successful. But first, as we've been pointing out in the Sheikh Teeth purification, if you haven't listened to the book from poverty to success, so you won't be lost on class Sunday, you'll find out swift, quick, fast, moving, purification right up to the modern times, the Astaghfirullah. Clean thoughts, as Granny taught us, hands and heart must be pure and clean and living a pure, righteous life. Because I know more and more, speaking to self, your outward will actually reflect your inner. Some of the tests and trials are not punishment, it's for preparation. Yeah. Some of the things is our soul is the ill of our own soul, good, because all good come from God. But remember, we must purify, even mm -hmm. though Badra Lee taught. That Issa, peace and blessings be upon them, that purity and love came together. You got to purify that you can truly love. I heard it in a voice sometime when I want to point the finger and three coming back. I'm like, it's, it's you, it's self, self saving. And I've said enough, but science, science and Islam is compatible and mathematics. Because Prophet Muhammad, once again, peace and blessings be upon him, one learned man or woman is harder on the devil than a thousand ignorant worshipers for knowledge supersedes belief. But we must start off crawling, you know, belief, faith, fruition, and you become what you know. No different than you read about fire. You look at fire and you touch it, you know it's hot, you know it's no, you know it's hot. Belief, we have to start somewhere. And with that, I just like to say love and light to the family. Salas, assalamu alaikum. And all the good things, the best of health, wealth, prosperity, special barakah, 
satisfactions and needs be upon you, your family, and all our ancestors and ancestors before us. Give thanks. I mean, I mean, I mean, thanks for that, Sheikh Sally. Powerful, powerful observation. And certainly, yes, our prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all of those who come in that line definitely understood, work with, and knew the importance of science and that what we call higher teaching, spirituality, and science are really all one and the same and very much married together. It's just the distortion of what is called science makes it sound as if and look as if is something different or alien to our ancient ways, but they are very much together and very much intact. And we are the ones, all of us that are in this Dara are the ones that embody all of those things, the science, the religious, and the spiritual. We are the embodiment of that. So trying to take one away with a Western understanding of what we think they represent would not be Islam, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, shakrallah. Anyone else? Closing thoughts, ideas, something you just gotta get off your chest? That we just can't wait to the retreat to say? Oh, bismillah, shaker, zima love, fire. This, this, um, um, when we was on Kung Fire Kung Radio this morning, she rec recommended visualize, um, vocalize out loud and write it down, or write it down, visualize. I don't know which order, but she was like, visualize what you want to see, vocalize it, and write it down. But remember first, that three, that purity, it can go exactly the opposite. So remember that the work starts within self. The work starts within self. As Sheikh Ibrahim's bra remind us, that temple, where you hear no stones, no trials, you know, no noise in the womb, that inner self we have to work on. Purification of the heart. Because we all know where's the closest place to meet Allah? In the heart. And what they say, <laughs> he who is successful who purify it. What are they talking about right there? Uh oh. <laughs> Thanks, love and life. Habib. Yeah, somewhere I read, write the vision, make it plain. And that's important. That's an important tool to first have the vision, be clear about the vision, and then write the vision and speak the vision into existence. So it's the vision, it's the writing and the speaking, which is the trinity of creation. Great point. Thanks for the correct order, Shake it just by Sakranal. Oh, you got it. You got it. Anyone else? This has been a very, very full class, magnificent class. So much light came forth. Good to see all of you all in here. And this time next Friday, we should all be together at the Butterfly Retreat by Allah's grace, power, and permission. Looking forward to that blessed event and certainly call forth protection and safety and harmony as we get ready to be together and to do great things in the light of this magnificent retreat guided by our Sheikh Sufi Ba. We close with our Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yom edin, iyaka na'budu wa iyaka na'sta'in. Idina sarata al-mustaqim, sarata al-adina nabda alayhim. 
Gairo Mahdubi Alehim Waladalim Amin, O Allah. Certainly send your covering of protection and love and healing upon everyone who is on this call and upon all of their families. Send your protection and your healing and your barakas upon our Murid order, extending all the way back to Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba, to Sheikh Ibrafal, to Serene Follow, Serene Salihu, to Sheikh Sufi Ba, to the sheikhs, the imams, the jurans, the disciples of our, or of our Dara and their family. Keep us focused during this time of intensity and help us and guide us to use the intensity of this 777 vibration to produce the results inwardly that we see outside of ourselves in manifested form. Guide our minds, our thoughts, our actions, and our steps as we continue our journey into oneness with thee and uniting with the divine nur of thee. Bake shake off of the bumba, bake shake it perform, bake serene follow, bake serene sally who, bake shake sufi ba, bake shake sufi ba, bake shake sufi ba. I mean, assalamu alaikum to all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sheikh Sufi Ba, for this place, for this light, and look forward to seeing and hearing you all on Sunday and Wednesday, and definitely seeing you on Friday and this coming weekend. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh and family. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam.